I'm going to talk to you about whether or not you should buy Knights of Honor 2, a real-time grand strategy game. For those of you who do not know who I am, I'm a general RTS gamer, and I've been following the release of Knights of Honor 2 for some time now, almost right from the beginning. I have a bit of a reputation around the community as I was fairly active on their forums, and I even got access to the beta release. So I have clocked at the moment around 250 hours on the game and completed all the Steam achievements for the game. So I hope I can say I know what I'm talking about here and give you guys some good advice and at the very least some insight here before you go out and purchase or do not purchase Knights of Honor 2. But keep in mind, they have made adjustments throughout the beta, and my experience may not be exact to the way the released game is. I will mention quickly, it can be bought in retail, retail stores, although I could not find which ones and which countries, but for you collectors or dinosaurs out there, it should be possible to purchase it over the counter. But with all that said, let's get into it. The first thing you will notice when booting up the game is a wicked music piece. Music and sounds are definitely a strong point throughout the game. The voice acting, the lines, and the music will keep you well immersed in the game. And honestly, over the 250 hours of gameplay, I did not really get bored of it. And even on a quick re reboot to you know record some video gameplay for this very video, uh, I was getting those pre-game music pumps and uh, chills, if you know what I mean. The second thing you will notice is a fairly simple and understandable starting interface with all the necessities, and honestly, this is another strong point of the game and common thread that permeates throughout much of the game. Most of the interface is solid and very fun of getting frustrated with it, and it always looks properly themed and designed. But upon starting your first game, you will notice that the map graphics are, well, somewhat lackluster for a game released in 2022. The game is designed in three-dimensional graphics with very little graphical effects and overall is very plain. It does do the job, but I would not write home to mom about it. The main feature of the game is the Royal Court, which can have up to 9 members. This is a similar feature function as that seen in Crusader Kings in terms of mechanics, but definitely dimmed down in terms of complexity. Every court member can be a different class, such as a marshal, diplomat, merchant, cleric, or a spy, and each class helps you acquire advantages either you know, to your own kingdom or over other kingdoms. The economy of the game has some interesting aspects to it because it ties in strategic resources which can give you strong strategic bonuses in various ways. But if you're looking to kind of strangle your opponents by constricting their economy via some sort of economic warfare or blockade or a complex, convoluted, interconnected economy, this really isn't the game. At least not yet. The diplomacy is fairly straightforward and structured in a way that the average player will be able to understand it and use it pretty quickly, in contrast to maybe some Paradox titles. It can feel really rewarding to pull it off and develop advantages, but likely due to the simplicity of it, it does not have much flavor, and over time I suspect the average player will get bored of it. At least in my own experience and in my own games, I got tired of it and to the point where I would try to avoid using it as much as possible. Tactical battles, uh, in a bit of a contrast, are super fun and bring a great way to connect emotionally with your troops and the fruits of your economic labor, of course. I had a ton of fun in various field battles, but when it came to laying sieges to a castle, the siege seemed to lack a bit of tactical depth or perhaps immersion. If you're looking for a game with tactical battle depth similar to that scene in the Total War series, KH2 Knights of Honor 2 will not bring that, but it does attempt to approach it. The Kingdom Traditions is a new feature in Knights of Honor 2, and it is a very, very healthy addition, which helps you really build your kingdom into a specific way, and there are some really cool role-playing aspects that a player can do with this feature. And or advantages slash strategies that they could employ in multiplayer to exploit other players in the multiplayer experience. 
The min-maxing or even role-playing various traditions was definitely a big and fun part in my Knights of Honor 2 experience so far. Multiplayer is also a new feature brought into Knights of Honor 2. Up to six players can be put into a multiplayer game where you can select various game rules, some of them definitely more fun than others, but as I found, the most enjoyable multiplayer games I had were the ones where we just set our own objectives. As a side note, all the battles are auto-resolved in multiplayer, which feels like a disappointment when coming from single player and enjoying the field battle so much. To not have them in multiplayer feels like a letdown. Modding, unfortunately, is not going to be released with the game at the moment. And I feel like given all the cons I've mentioned, modding would have been a huge saving grace for the game. Luckily, the devs do intend to introduce this, just not with the current base game. So it will take some time for this to roll out, and in that time I expect many of the game's faults to not quite get the love they may be need. For me, the fact that the game is not rolling out with mods really hurts it. But over time it will be released and then I think this game really could deliver some wicked gameplay and enjoyment for those out there. If you enjoy a straightforward grand strategy game without the complexity of Crusader Kings but with the real time strategy aspect which the Total War series lacks, then it's a good buy. Knights of Honor 2 delivers his very own idea of a grand strategy and stays true to its DNA. It is somewhere in the middle of Crusader Kings and Total War, and definitely something to take a closer look at if you are interested. At the present moment, if you are new to strategy games, I would make the purchase and buy it. Since the game is a bit more simple than the bigger titles out there, it offers a great stepping stone for new players who are a bit new to the genre as a whole, but if you're a more experienced grand strategy player, I would wait. For, definitely for the further developments uh, that will be executed through the modding and potentially uh, for any lower pricing. So definitely pick it up at a lower price. That's all for here. So uh, I hope you guys found that insightful. Bye.